One of the darkest times in history for a small German town named Eprath during a 25-year spree in the middle of the 16th century has come back into public view after surviving documents were recovered more than four centuries later. The documents are not to be taken lightly, and the story you will hear will be one of a dark and twisted nature. This is Unexplained Mysteries and the terrifying case of Peter Stumpf and the werewolf of Bedberg. In the small German town of Eprath, between the years of 1564 and 1589, a strange case would develop surrounding that of witchcraft and werewolves that would later be known as the case of Peter Stumpf. According to a 16-page pamphlet that was published in London back in the year 1590, of which was an English translation of a German printed document, the pamphlet describes the small town of Eprath as having been at the centre of a number of impossible-to-explain attacks from a large, wolf-like monster that would later be given the appropriate name of the Werewolf of Bedberg, named after the large German town of Bedberg that resided only a few miles away. This monster would go on to attack 18 victims over the span of 25 years. Additional details according to the pamphlet describes that the victims of the dog-like monster were mostly children, with 14 of the victims having been described as young children and two of the victims having been pregnant mothers with almost fully developed fetuses. Due to the large number of victims and the growing number of attacks over the next two decades, an investigation was put underway into trying to understand why the monster was attacking the village and where it could be located. This would lead to the trial of Peter Stumpf and the accusations from the town of supposed witchcraft and hidden cults. Peter Stumpf, also known as Peter Stump, was a man in his late 30s to early 40s of whom had led a rather secluded life of mystery in the small town of Eprath. Not much surrounding the man exists in the modern day, but accounts of his wife passing away due to mysterious circumstances was a prevalent issue in his adult life leaving his position of being a widowed man with two children a quite well-known fact amongst the nearby townspeople. Additionally, historians have speculated that Peter Stumpf had been a man of exceptional wealth, working as a farmer for the surrounding regions, as well as being involved in the politics of the nearby town of Bedberg during pivotal moments in the history of Germany. It is due to this wealth and political influence that many historians believe the trial of Peter Stumpf was nothing more than a thinly veiled political agenda from his opposition that would attempt to force him into strange admissions of guilt and elaborate stories. Despite this theory, however, the story surrounding the werewolf of Bedberg would hold substantial evidence and strange coincidences that would be revealed over the 25-year spree. The first few attacks from the werewolf of Bedberg were originally nothing more than a series of animal attacks that were reported but incredibly difficult to explain, resulting in the destruction of property, large livestock and family pets. Many of these attacks centred around pointless destruction, with large cattle torn apart and tossed great distances or done in such ways that would have been impossible for wildlife to have naturally been able to do. It is during this time that legends of a large wolf monster had begun to spread, with few witnesses on the attacks of the animals claiming to have seen the werewolf in the distance or stalking their property. Several years later, following these attacks on livestock, the town would be struck by tragedy after the first attack on the townspeople would take place. The first human attacks would see the death of a number of children all throughout the town. Unfortunately for the safety of the townspeople, however, many of the town's residents had believed that the first few cases involving attacks against children were merely exaggerated accounts of a normal wolf attack by grieving parents, resulting in a morbid twist of events that would require several more children to be at the centre of future attacks before enough witness accounts were gathered for the townspeople to believe such claims and for the survivors to finally gain the momentum that a supernatural creature was responsible. After another group of children would be rendered helpless in future attacks, the town gathered together and accepted the truth presented before them, that a supernatural wolf-like monster was at the centre of these strange attacks and so must be stopped. This would result in the town arming themselves in preparation for a fight against the next werewolf attack, 
believing that there could be one or many of these creatures, as well as investigating claims of dark magic ritual behavior throughout the small town. Though 25 years may have been an incredibly long time for an investigation to result in a culprit being located, the main cause for the delay in the arrest of Peter Stumpf was that there had been no suspicion of Stumpf during the first few attacks from the werewolf of Bedberg. This was mostly due to the fact that one of the first children to have died by the hands of the monster was Peter Stumpf's own son, shortly after the passing of his wife, and was actually one of the greatest evidences of Peter Stumpf's innocence during the beginning of this terrible time for the town of Eprath, but would later be used as key evidence of his growing bloodlust during the investigation and trial. After the town had readied for the attack, the werewolf of Bedberg had arrived by midnight, completely unaware of the preparations made by the town. This would result in the townsmen preventing an attack from the creature and eventually cutting off the werewolf's front paw before it could strike against one of the townspeople. In a fit of pain and rage, the werewolf ran off into the night and the townspeople had believed to have seen the last of it. That next day, however, proved to be a pivotal turn in the investigation. The investigation of dark ritualistic practice and witchcraft led back to Peter Stumpf, with some claiming that he had purchased material for witchcraft or that others had rumoured he had practised such dark rituals in the past that could have summoned such a monster. As the investigation group visited Peter Stumpf, they would uncover that Stumpf had been in the process of treating a terrible wound and had attempted to hide from the town for the next coming weeks. To the horror of the investigation team, the wound that Stumpf had been suffering from was the sudden disappearance of his hand that directly matched the recent wound inflicted on the werewolf itself, resulting in the immediate arrest of Peter Stumpf, who declared his innocence. His arrest proved to be a popular trial as politicians from Bedberg would take special interest in the trial and visit many of the investigations and the trial itself. Some have argued that potential political opponents may have influenced the trial, whereas others argued that political allies may have tried to dissuade further investigation into any of his close ties or friends. After several days of interrogation, Peter Stumpf would later admit that the majority of his youth was spent worshipping the devil and practising dark rituals of witchcraft in an attempt to satiate his most personal and morbid desires. This ritualistic worship, as he claimed, began when he was only 12 years old and had continued well into his adult life. Peter Stumpf would later claim that his soul was turned for the devil after being visited by a succubus of whom would please him in return for his immortal soul. Despite these admissions of practice of witchcraft, he refused to take responsibility of the acts of the werewolf, which would lead to several more days of interrogation. After enough time had passed, Peter Stumpf would later admit that he was, indeed, the monster that had attacked the town. His admission would send chills down the spines of his interrogators as he would laugh and describe the taste of his victims, specifically referring to the unborn children as dainty morsels. When asked how this transformation would occur, he admitted that one of his rituals had summoned a strange creature that arrived in the night of whom he believed was the devil himself. The devil then gave Peter Stumpf a strange belt-like device that, once worn, would allow him to transform into a, quote, greedy, devouring wolf, strong and mighty with eyes great and large, which in the night sparkled like fire, a mouth great and wide, with most sharp and cruel teeth, a huge body and mighty paws. Once a user removed the belt, however, the user would transform back into his human shape. Although such a belt was never found after his arrest, the townspeople accepted his admission of guilt as no further attacks had taken place during the trial, instilling the belief that Peter Stumpf was at the centre of the disturbances. The end of the trial would be quick, voting to undergo a morbid death penalty to prevent any others from ever trying to attain such dark power ever again resulting in the passing of Peter Stumpf, his surviving daughter and a mistress of whom was found at the residence of his home during the trial. Since then, no further attacks have ever occurred in the area. But what do you all think of the terrifying case of Peter Stumpf and the attacks from the werewolf of Bedberg? Do you think that Peter Stumpf could have been innocent? Could this entire case have been a subtle political trial? 
Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.